As you can just see, this looks like a very, very old coal mine wall many years ago. I do know there was actually a coal mine over here, stretched right away at the back. There is actually remains of brick wall for the buildings just over to here. If I quickly make my way up slightly, you might be able to see some certain stuff. So I'll have to just make it quick because I've got my bike and bag there. I'll quickly show you as quick as possible. So you can just see, making my way up. You've got all the old ground where the colliery used to be situated. And these all the old brick remains for old Nook colliery, as you can just see. I'm guessing these would have been the workshops, that would have been where the, the winding wheel went down many, many years ago. You see quite a lot of the building remains stretched down into the dip down there, but this is one of them. As you can see, getting rid of some of this ivy, you can actually see the old brick wall and also removing some of this. A bit of a remaining metal for it, so there we go. You see quite a lot over here. And there's more of the old brick wall. And also, if I just get this down, you can also see one there and also one pole there. There's evidence of actually a coal mine being over here. So you imagine the uh, old Nook Hollow really does date back. I think it dates so old. So basically, a bit of history, it actually says the mine owners were 1885 Fisher & Co. 1900 to 1915 was Old Nook Colliery Company. And 1919 to 1940, Mobley and Perry Limited. So the historical timeline of the coal mine opening was 1885. You can see it really does date back. And it actually closed in 1940, which is quite a way back a bit. So right, old wooden survey map on for you now, so you can actually just see old Nook Colliery. We're just into the wooden where we are situated, those shafts, and by the maps there's actually numerous buildings. We've actually a tramway leading all the way down to the bottom to lead into by the side of Hayes Colliery. And there was also like a very old brickworks in Woolerscote. So that tramway would have led down to several sections. I think there was somewhere other collieries over here, Cradley Park Colliery somewhere nearby. You even had uh, even more tramways leading up to several sections, which is quite cool. It's awesome to see the old history of all the collieries that were situated here, like where it was on the maps on the Ordnance Survey, just to show you some old brick remains, which is right the way in front of me, just right the way there. Absolutely awesome. So where we're heading is all the way to Wooler Scope down to the bottom. Got a park to show you. Got a church to show you as well. I might go to the church in Ards with St Mary's. I have one more view of it in this video because it is absolutely amazing. I love the architecture in there. It's just out this world and some of the stained glass windows. And now it opens up really tall up. Going to go and check that out. After that, we're going to make our way to Mary Stevens Park. And then we'll see where we end up after that because it's going to be a big day for this. Very beautiful. You see the sun shining. And I thought, I was going to go somewhere else today, but I thought this would be a nice one for you. So there we go, let's go and journey on and meet you at the park. i tell you what, this is an absolute beautiful sight here. You can just see all the surrounding distance onto the back of Dudley Fields, Pedmore Fields. Got a farm just right away down in the dip. Got Clent Hills over there, and I can just see the back end of Witchborough Hill. If I just zoom in, you can just see Witchborough Hill there. It's actually a farm right around the corner there. Got Clent Hills just right away at the top and some more old farms just right around the corner. Very vast land. You can walk the majority of this land over the back and it is actually one of my favourite local walks once more, the lovely fields. And then over to the Pedmore Fields which then would lead to Wichborough Hill. Some of my favourite walking routes. I haven't done it for quite a while. I might have to do that one again. Might do a full length feature video on that one one more time. But let's keep journeying down. We're going to get to the bottom and then the park is actually not too, too far down here. So right, here we are at Stephen's Park in Woolerscoat. Just pan around to show you. It's actually where you enter the grounds for it, just right away here, with a welcoming sign. Stephen's Park, right around the corner. Uh, the sign here saying Stephen's Park. It's got all the maps onto it, telling you all about the, the area where the house is right away there. Massive open land. It's actually a stream which runs all the way down. So basically, there is a bit of a historical background to this place. So Stephen Park, Com comprises some of the open fields of medieval Wodasco and the corrugating marks of Ridge and Furrow can still be seen today. It's housed people for many years, dating back to 1282, when the hamlet of uh, Wilfercote was uh, home to two families. 
By the 16th century, the Millward family owned most of the site, and in 1677, King James I forbade the use of the charcoal in five in glassmakers' kilns, forcing them to use coal instead. The Millward family had the best fire clay in the country, as well as coal beneath their lands, and exploited their commodities to become a wealthy and constructed Wooderscoe Hall. A number of different families uh, subsequently held the estate. In 1930, Ernest Stevens bought the estate and donated it to the Lyon Wooderscoe Urban District Council as a park later that year. So I do know it's absolutely beautiful around here. You can actually go down that path down the bottom. There's a stream. I will show you that later on. So that is actually called uh, Ludge Bridge Brook, just right away down there. So it even goes up. You've got signs here saying cricket grounds. The house is right away up top up to there. Beautiful open land for the trees over to here. And you can just see once more, it is really nice to cycle this one. But it's absolutely full of wildlife over here. I remember the last time I come through it, it was about five o'clock in the morning going to work and I heard that much wildlife and nature up here. It is really impressive. And you see, absolutely full of trees, all in leaf. Beautiful. So I'm just going to have a, a little bit of a break. I will tell you a bit more information about this park itself before we journey further on. But you see, there is quite a lot of old trees in here because you imagine the estate really does date back. Imagine when these trees were even planted. But you can just see very, very old trees right the way here. That is a really big one, that is. And if I just pan right away up, you can just see how tall and how thick the trunk is right away at the top. That's a really big one, that. It just goes so, so high up. And that does tell you that this place really does date old by having old trees. Most estates planted their trees, I'm talking, many, many, many years ago. That's how you know this is actually one big estate. Imagine all the land, what he had many years ago, stretching all the way down to here. I'll go and show you that hall a bit later on. So Wooderscote is a residential area of Starbridge, West Midlands. It is administered by the Metropolitan Borough of Dudley. It falls within the ward of Crowley and Wooderscote and the parliamentary constituency of Starbridge. It is situated three miles east of the town centre of Starbridge. It shares a border to the east with the town of Alzoin. It is bordered by the areas of Lye, Pedmore, Crayley and Hayley Green. As you just seen, you seen the countryside earlier when I showed you that road. Really quite cool. So the area dates back to 1282 when it referred to as the hamlet of uh, Wilfercote. The name Wollerscote is derived from the Saxon uh, Wolhears Cot. The early 1282 records of the area tell a family named Agnes and Walter D. Wolfercote. Thomas Millward lived in Wollerscote in the 17th century at Wollerscote Hall. He was known as a supporter of, of the King during the English Civil War. In 1643, he offered uh, Prince Rupert the hall as his base. The Prince escaped the hall after his loss at the Battle of Stalbridge Common and uh, Thomas subsequently hid him in an old well. Wow. During the 1900s, a locally known and wealthy industrialist by the name of Ernest Stevens created his wealth an enamelled hollowware trade. His ware was manufactured um, in nearby Crowley Heath and sold under the Judge trademark. Ernie Stevens lived in the hall behind and went on to gift the hall to the people of Wollerscote. So you see there, it really does date back a bit. And Stevens Park, you can see right the way here, is a 27 hectare, 67 acre site with recreation of facilities, flower beds, grassed areas. The park holds an elevated position and such is afforded some spectacular far reach views of the surrounding countryside and the black country. You can see some views right at the top which I'll show you. Uh, Ludge Bridge uh, Brook lies in the lower northeast section of the park and is lined with uh, mature willow and alder trees. The brook area provides a habitat for numerous types of wildlife. So you can just see right the way there, lots of information on Stevens Park and also the history it really does date back. So the, the housing up here, it does mention about the housing and Wollerscote Hall. There's even more about the hall here. So Wollerscote Hall is a large three-storey house situated in the Stevens Park in Wollerscote. 
The hall dates back to the 17th century and in 1971 Historic England added the hall to the heritage category of a listed building and Grade 2 listed. Under the Planning and Listed Buildings and Conservation Areas Act in 1990, the building is noted for its special architecture or historical interest. Lots of information here, more about the hall, it even goes all the way down to family history. Drop the link in the description if you want to read that one. Well, let's have one more view of the park and go show you around it. Well, I must say it is really beautiful. It does go down into a bank. I'm going to show you down there a bit later on. But if we just cycle up, I will just show you the back areas and then come back to the hall a bit later on. So I think this place really does offer some views. You can just, just sort of see a view just appearing right away now, just right away in the distance. So if I just move a bit more further up, you can just see it right away there. Guessing that's actually the, the back end of where Caledonia is, right away at the back, if I'm right. Because that goes up in a, a big massive art hill up there. But really beautiful, you see all the housing sites just developing right away at the back. Beautiful, the sounds of wildlife just at the moment. Yeah, I think I was right. I think that's actually where that was in the distance of the back. Can just see like a big massive tower sticking up into the distance. A lot of flats right away at the back. So I have noticed quite a lot of flats right around the distance, so you can just see a bit more view of the black country in a minute. If I just zoom into the flats, bear in one moment. If I just zoom in, that might be the Delph right about the back over there. Thinking that could be the Delph of all those flats. So if I am right, drop it in the comments, but I know Brawley or Flats is situated somewhere like that. It possibly well could be. Let's just uh, journey a bit more further up. Oh wow, it was actually right. You can just see much more of the black country now and surrounding areas. Even further to the back of the far countryside. Right the way over there. That is a really beautiful sight, Dallas. I might get some nice uh, photographic cinematics in a minute. Really beautiful. You can just see further at the back, you've got the, uh, the flats over there. Caledonia. Even further back, parts of the black country over that way. Even further up today, if I moved further, you would be able to see much more behind these trees. Really beautiful sight that is, so I was expecting to see a bit of the black country for the views from here. Well, let's go have a journey around and get you a bit of cinematics of the place. Really lovely over here. So right, let's go and actually show you now uh, Ludge Bridge uh, Brook, which is right away down here. Somewhere lurking, that's where we're heading right away now, somewhere. So here we are at Ludge Bridge Brook, right away to the bottom of the Wollascope Park, just right away down here. Absolutely beautiful. You can just see the Ludge Bridge Brook just flowing all the way down. It goes somewhere at the back, then bends all the way around for where you come right away in comes down to here to an overflow system thing which leads somewhere else as you can just see beautiful bit of brook section you see it runs somewhere just further over the back that way maybe i think that's where it's actually heading just down to there but what a beautiful park this is actually one of my favorite parks which is local it's massive open land but the views up there are absolutely spectacular I just noticed as I got further around the corner, I was doing the cinematics, I could see parts of Dudley and even further beyond. What a place, really do love it. So I've only got one more thing to show you around here now, and that's the main hall, which is right away at the top. 
So let's go journey right up there and go and show you that one. It does really date back old and it's nice architecture from the outside. But one more view of the brook before we leave. As you can just see, the brook flowing all the way from that way down the bottom. So right here we are, here's the hall itself. It is absolutely massive. It's nice from the back here. It just really does remind you of a very, very old house. Just pan around to show you. Really beautiful, just uh, you can see it right the way here. Wow, you see how very tall up that is. But just imagine how far this place really, really does date back. Round this corner, you just see the outside of this area. Wow, right the way there. Even more, you see all the brick going right the way up. And then further up, you just see the outside, the little balcony where you open the window and come out. Got some nice patterns right out there. So I'm really glad I got to show you that. So where we're heading now is all the way down to Pedmore Church. I'm going to see if it's open this time. If not, I'm going to show you from the outside. But one more view from the corner here so you can actually just see it zooming in. There we go. Well, don't see this very often, a road named after your name. So I'm heading all the way to Pedmore Church. It's only around the corner. You see there, Drew Road. I own all this. <laughs> My name. So can I have all these houses, please? <laughs> I wish I owned this road, I tell you. My name. <laughs> so uh, I don't think it's actually too far to get to Pedmore Church, actually. Just panning around to show you. You see, it's actually quite nice house in the States around here. It isn't really too far. You've got Whisperer Hill, which is right away at the back. You've seen the monument just peeking right away out in the distance. I'll tell you what, I would love to live around here. It's, it is actually quite nice than what I thought it was. So right here we go, St Peter's Church. Just down into Pedmore. A really beautiful church. It's actually a smaller one. But you can just tell by the architecture panning all the way around. It is really old. You've got some old uh, sculptures in carved onto there. A very beautiful architecture. I was actually watching um, a TV series going back uh, on YouTube, which is really old. Fred Dibner, it was actually talking about the, the buildings now. They actually constructed all the arches. It is really interesting. If you type in Fred Dibner, it's somewhere on today because he, he does steeple jacking. And he was talking about how these arches were actually made within churches and chapels. It was really interesting. But you imagine the time and effort, what they really did put into things like this. Wow. And the, the top up to there where the, the bell tower is, you've got to see this. You can see the clock up to there. That is really tall up, going up to there. Wow. I'm just hoping this place is open this time because I've been on numerous visits and it's been closed. Let's go and see what's in there and if it's open at all. But you can imagine with a place like this, this is where Pedmore gets most of his history from, is the local church. And this is why I find church is very important. It tells you how far it really does date back into time. So right here we are in Pedmore Church. Absolutely beautiful. Just at the front, got the stained glass windows right the way there. As you can just see, beautiful patterns into there and it really does stand out with all the, the wall just onto the corner. If I move back a bit, you see you get some really stunning cinematics there with the stained glass window and then the front. Got an arch here just right at the top. This was actually the original arch, it's really tall. It is very old and you've got the organ just right the way in front. Got the stained glass window just right the way here and also this is a very old photograph the 29th of june 1971 the church choir all lined up together so just coming all the way through we have got this uh, stand here and this is believed where they actually wash their hands but they replaced it to the, the left one because it was left handed so they used that one now. You see beautiful patterns just on the side of the back wall.
great to see the Pedmore Church and the amount of times that I've come down to see if this was open. It was closed. Just speaking to the, the nice lady, absolutely um, nice to talk to you. Tell me about the history of the place, about the upkeepings and donations. You say sometimes it's hard to raise those donations. And it is a shame to see quite a lot of people today that don't really come to the church as much as they often do. And it's nice to see people more come here to visit or, you know, just to see the church. But it would be nice as well, so I thought I might mention the video. If you do want to come down and make a donation towards the church, it would be very helpful towards the church itself and the upkeeping in the rectory, because it is a really beautiful place, this is. And you just see, this is where much of the history really does lie back into places like this. And you just see, just coming right away out the church, the front porch is absolutely amazing. As you can see, the architecture, what's been carved out right away above. Wow. What a nice place. So let's go outside and we'll tell you a bit of history about the church itself. So really lovely. So to speak to the lady, it's actually Joy Evans, one of the church wardens here. I want to give you a shout out. You've been really lovely. Welcome me. As soon as I come through them doors, you've welcomed me. You've made me feel like I really do want to come back to this church and just explore it one more time. But the outside of it is just wow. The architecture is amazing. It's only a small church, but the inside it is quite big and decent in size. But this isn't the original church. It was actually reconstructed. As you see in the arch inside there, that was the original arch. Evidence of the old church being here many, many years ago. So as you just see, this church really does date old. We've got the old book here. Old Pedmore and the rebuilding of his church by Geoffrey Parks. Just opening this book because she said I could have this, so I'll take it back with me. It's actually got some really old uh, sketches into it in 1836, uh, going down onto the, the first page if I try and open it. You see there, some really cool old photos here. It's Pedmore Lane in the 1930s, bank house on the left and rectory stables just visible in the background. To the right of the road, as you just see, really cool photograph there. It's going back even further more into the book. It tells you quite a lot of information about about Witchbury Hill, about the uh, the church. You see right the way there, this is actually one of the church, the old church in 1855. Wow. You just see right the way there. So you just see the old church from the northeast, dating really old. It just tells you a lot of information this book does. So, well, if you do want to get a, a copy of this, I'll try and get a copy sorted. But drop it in the comments if you would like uh, to see this. St Peter's Church in 1928 from the old rectory garden. Wow. Some really cool old photos here. Some that I've not even seen on the internet either. It tells you about the rectors of Pedmore. Just right the way here. Wow. It dates to 1304. That's really how old this church is. And then another one. Pedmore, North Worcestershire, another old sketch right the way there. Really cool to see that book, the old um, Pedmore and the rebuilding of his church. So I've got information what Joy Evans gave me. So it says here, there was a priest at Pedmore in 1086 as recorded in the Doomsday Book, but no mention is made of any church or chapel at that time. The building is Grade 2 listed, so changes in fabric can't be made without permission. It was built by the well-known Victorian architect, uh, Frederick Preedy. The south doorway is refitted Norman Arch from the old church. The present church dates back to 1869. The building was finished and consecrated in 1871. The stone for the church came from a local quarry off Auntie John Lane and Bath Stone for the more exposed parts. Time Paynham uh, relief sculpture above the doorway is believed to date back to 1150. It does tell you about the tower, so the lower part dates to the old church 1250 but the upper part of the style is 15th century. This is the only significant part that still remains when rebuilt in 1869. So quite a lot of information here, I will take a photo and PDF all of this so if you want copies of this, copies of the old rebuilding of the church I'll try and get that sorted for you but I'll call this lots of information based on it so i'll be keeping that with me and storing that away because that is really useful for maybe a future video or even further video on this church itself 
But where we're going now is all the way down to Old Winford. We're going to go and check out St Mary's one more time. I've been in there for probably over an hour now actually, but it's really so fantastic talking to the lady. But let's go and journey on and uh, see what else we can discover. So just coming all the way through, you can just see just above us right now is actually Starbridge Junction. Right away above there, it's got like a, a metal like grid right away above. But right away down is so cool because it's actually like tunnel like architecture coming all the way through. Really cool, so you've got one. Then you've got another gap above the ceiling right away above up to there. Then you've got another like tunnel system here happening. And then you've got another one just right the way down there. Really cool seeing that. Absolutely awesome. So I don't think I've actually ever been down this part before. Right, I think the church, if I believe, is somewhere back up to here though. I looked on Google Maps. But check out that. How awesome is it just to see that? You do really discover some uh, cool things every time you go on various visits. But that's Starbridge Junction right away at the top up to there. So here we are, this is the church, as you just see, we're just right next to the graveyard. We've covered a lot of videos in this place and a lot of history, but what I'm going to do, basically go inside and just show the architecture mainly in this video. You see, it is quite a big graveyard. Some of the graves over here do date really, really old. Just caught the church bells for some time then. But you see from the outside, if it just pan all the way down to here, it is really, really old, as you can just see. Wow, that is an amazing view. Old bits of a piece of the church. You see, I've got that out castellated right away at the top of the bell tower. So here we are. You just see the front porch is covered with all names, a lot of writing on the walls. You've got Mary Stevens. It says there, 1869 to 1925. And that is actually where we're heading to. We're heading to Mary Stevens Park in a little while. Got Ernest Stevens onto there, 1867 to 1957, right away there. So here we are, one more view of St Mary's Church. This is it. And you can just see what I really do love about it. It opens up into that massive cathedral type and goes so high up. This is pretty much one of the biggest stained glass windows that I've seen locally around most of the churches. It is really awesome. The, the colours in there are just absolutely amazing. Padding all the way around, you can see the other stained glass windows on that side. These ones aren't the stained glass as much, but they've got little detailed patterns right away at the top. And then right about there, that little circle, with more beautiful stained glass patterns right away above to there. It is a really big church, this one. So how awesome is this? This is the church itself. That's so old. It's just absolutely amazing. Wow. 
But I mean, from the outside of it, you can just really sense his architecture panning all the way around it. He's really tall up on the bell tower, going right away out to the top up to there. And you can just see beautiful patterns. Those are sort of similar to what you get at St. Canelm's Church. As you may have seen in the Stour Valley video, what I've just recently done. But the brick is just all sandstone going all the way around. Unlike the last one that I've just went to, Pedmore Church, this is much more of an older one in its originality. But wow, one more view from the outside of it, just up to the corners. It is really massive. So here we are, Mary Stevens Park. It gets really busy over here. So you just see like the, the first park I went to, really massive in size. If I just come down, got really old trees. And you imagine because there is a sort of, some sort of estate over the back, which I will show you in a little while. There's a pool over here. Imagine it brings a lot of the locals because it's much local to them to come down and enjoy the vast open space to bring the kids, bring the dog for a walk, see people enjoying themselves, having picnics. It's nice to see a park being used for much than what it should. It is a beautiful park in Starbridge. I know the, there is a bandstand somewhere over here and all this once more was part of that one estate many, many years ago. Just panning around to show you, you can just see the massive scale of it going all the way around. Beautiful, the trees with all the leaves onto them, as you can just see. It's really nice over here. It's going on, but you can just see the bandstands just right the way over there, zooming in right now. There's the bandstand. And the buildings are just right away of that way. That's what I want to go and check out. But it really does remind me of sort of Hayden Hill Park when you've got the vast open land, some facilities over there. I don't know if the toilets or some sort of active place. It says, uh, let's get active onto there. Well, so let's go and check out more things around here. So here we are, this is actually the bowling greens, you can actually see them actually doing a bit of bowling at the moment. Right the way at the back, just over to there. So this is it, this is the old buildings which are right the way at the back, as you can just see. That's got a clock up to there, and there is actually a sign just right around the corner. So the clock on this building was presented by Messrs H.B. Croft and J.E. Dunn of Starbridge, in application of the exceptional service rendered to the town. It says there by ALD HP Jones, 1947 to 1950. It's very hard to read that from here. But you see, there's the clock right the way at the top. But when you view of it, it just really does look dilapidated. It makes you wonder what they actually use these for. You see, very old architecture to serve you in right away from the corner here. Very old. I mean, what is this building even used for in this corner? Panning all the way around, you can see they've actually put like a, a bench onto with a man. Let's just get up to it and we'll, uh, sit down by it. Whew. Oof, that frightened me, that lads, is literally thought I'll see the ghost. <laughs> you can just see right the way here. This is actually um, some sort of very good uh, metal sculpture which has been placed onto the bench and welded right the way on. Let's view it for you right the way here. And then you've got my. Uh, my trousers stuck on back then, it was really sharp. <laughs> you see, how cool is that? And it does tell you on to it, this is actually Major Frank Edward Folly, uh, CMG, 1884 to 1958, who lived in the quiet retirement near this park. But in the 1930s, out over 10,000 Jewish people escaped from the Holocaust. Whilst working the British passport control officer in Berlin, he he who saves one, saves the world. As you just see right the way there, Major Frank Edward Follow. So here we are, let's go and check out the pool. And he's actually right away at the bottom, and I believe there's actually a carp in here. When I saw my come down a couple of years back, we took bread into there, and a load of carp come up and was actually feeding. Let's go down there, see if we're seeing the fish, but there's quite a lot of wildlife on here. You get your typical water birds, more hens, many more. So right, this is it. This is the massive pool for Mary Stevens, just right the way in front. The scale of it is really quite huge. And if you just go down there, I might go down there in a little bit because sometimes you do see some water birds right at the back. There's a lot of coots on here, more hens. The coots have actually got the babies, just zooming right the way in. It is very a distance to zoom in to see them. 
it's actually like a little bit of a water fountain feature just right the way down there coming right the way out notice there's a carp down there just in the carp just come to the surface where the bubbles are got even more cooties coots here just nesting right the way there for the one eggs you see you does attract quite a lot of wildlife down here there is quite a lot to do but usually you do see herons down here I reckon wonder if you do get a kingfisher down here same as the lisos but there is a bit of an overflow system so i've actually just heard that so it flows down and then it goes somewhere else so i make you wonder where that actually leads to so here we are a bit more further down here's the carp there's a load of carp in here check out this there's tons of them common carp right the way there you see there's actually one big one they've seen me and gone under but there's a lot of them there's actually a massive one right the way there it has been a couple of years since I've been here. There's so many. Right the way there. Tons of big carp into there. I bet there's mirror carp and common carp in here. There's so much. So you just see, like I mentioned the other year, I think there was actually um, F1s in here. F1s are baby carp. There's quite a lot of them. So whether they've grew up in the amount of time that I've been here, they've been really fed well. There's so many. Imagine fishing this. <laughs> I could just stand on a rock right now and have a good afternoon. There's so many. Surface feeding for carp. I really could do that actually. But there's so many onto here. Tons of them. Let's go and read that board down there. There's an information board. Oh wow, that's about as close as I can see for you. Right the way there in the edge. It's a massive one right the way here. All oh, simist started off. <laughs> But I believe this is actually called Heath Pool, and there's quite a lot of information based on Heath Pool. It says there, uh, changing in the landscapes. So we would have a grand view up to the house from the pool in the early 1900s. So today it's obscured by trees and the tennis courts. Open vistas across the park from the house were typical large houses and parklands of the time. At this time, so there, the pool had a lot of ornamental planting around it and decorative bridge. A feature of the poolside was a, a rhododendron walk which have, would have a wide variety of species. I actually got a map on there, it says Old Wimpford, a few things, you've actually got the glassworks, that's actually what Starbridge was popular for, is all the old glassworks. Bit of a, looks like a rail track going right the way through. It says there, 1885, extent urbanisation before the park. There's a picture there, as you can just see the rhododendron walk in the park really old photo old photos of the pool show us how attractive it was and you see there you can just literally see right the way to the house at the back and there's actually people in here actually uh, swimming wow and it says there a boating lake in addition to the wildlife the pool is also used by the starbridge model boat club the club meets the heath pool in mary stevens park all year round Weather permitting, their monthly indoor meetings are held in the activity centre. Right the way there, a photo. So you have got a brook that actually runs into the pool. This is actually Rivy Brook. So Heath Pool was originally created by Benjamin Pratt as a mill pond to feed the gig mill. With the, uh, the Rivy Brook feeds the pool and a network of streams connected the pool. And there are other pools further up the watercourse to the mill. Many of these uh, watercourses have since been converted. The uh, gig mill produced cloth and wool products from the 1600s and later was adapted to the aid in the production of iron, hence gig mill forge. So you just imagine many, many years ago, just the view from here now, and then right away the distance to the far back house, I can just see rhododendrons right about the back, so that would have been the rhododendron walk going all the way across. Well, a beautiful place, this Heath Pool in Mary Stevens Park, and you've got the water fountain right at the back, just coming right the way out. How cool is that? So, I've really enjoyed coming down here today to come and check it out. So, enjoy the rest of the cinematics. We're going to go around the park and check out some more. But the carp are really massive into here. I've noticed quite more of them. And there is a few F1s into there, I can just see a few of them. <laughs> 